welcome back to chapter 5. There's probably going to be a bit of adjustments here and there and just some overall things that we forgot. And we're gonna start here with our stock. Gonna take these edges which appear a little bit flat and by dragging them up we already make it a bit rounder there which matters because that might be something that we will eventually see from first person. So let's make sure we have enough curve there. Gonna connect these edges here with a flow connection to also make it a bit rounder. And since we have symmetry modifier on, we already took care of it on the other side as well. As a next thing, I'm going to have a look at our upper handguard, which appears to be too low poly here when we look at the silhouette. So what I'm going to do is take that piece here and go over to our isolation mode with it. And what I will do is take each of these segments with our ring selection and just give it the flow connect to make it extra round all the way through here and then we can just delete the right side and use our symmetry modifier to get the other side as well. And I want to do the same thing here on that element. Just take all these segments and flow connect it. And in that case, I'm just gonna do it throughout the whole thing. We don't need to use the symmetry modifier on it here. It's not like that takes us much time to do here. And at the front we have also this metal cap here which could need some extra edge loop there in the segments. So I'm going to make sure that I only select these three edges and give them the flow connect as well. And in that case, I'm also just going to do it here on the other side without our symmetry. And that should definitely be enough here for making it nice and round. And back to our stock. If you look at that reference image here, this element that we worked on at the very beginning actually makes a bit of a curve there, which I totally missed. So I'm just going to drag this geometry up that we already had there, add that edge loop here or edge connection, and then just bring it down and give it a double chamfer here to get that look that we've seen there on the reference image. Let me also copy and paste our chamfer and turbo smooth on that element. And now that I zoom in here, I notice that these pieces on the right and the left side could come out a bit more. So I'm just going to select these verts and scale them on the X axis so that they actually line up there to that side of the stalk. And let me also have a look at it here from our side autographic view. Let's make a selection for all these birds, align them vertically, and let's drag them into our receiver. And that means that we can delete these faces here at the back, which we will never see. Next, I want to be adding that little step there on our bottom receiver part, so that our upper receiver looks better connected there. And for that, I will create an edge connection here, drag it all the way here to the left and create another edge and drag it into that edge with our edge constraint on. And then we can just take these faces and drag them down, which then gives us this step that we've seen there. And while being in isolation mode, I'm going to take these three faces and give it an auto smooth on it. And now it's time to add some text here to our receiver. And one of these letters is actually a Russian type. First of all, let's just create the text that we can create with our alphabet. 
A and B here for the upper part, drag it out here and then just copy it down on the z-axis and let's already type out that letter that we can also still do here with our alphabet and next I'm going to make use of a website called russian.typeit.org and just copy and paste that one letter that we need to have there. So it's really as simple as that if you don't have any Russian font installed or you don't know how to otherwise access it and now I'm just going to convert these text elements into editable poly and attach them together as one element. And like we did it with our rear side letters, Control A in face mode and then just give it an inset and take the outer edges in border mode and drag them out. I'm gonna give it the outer smooth. And then let's just copy the chamfer on it. And I'm going to put the tension to 0.5, make it a little rounder and also give it two segments, which looks really good now. Just the kind of high poly text that we want to have. And speaking of high poly text, I'm going to do the same thing here on the other side. So I will switch over to our right view, click with our text tool here into the right spot and then just add that number that we've seen on the reference image. And I guess that means that our gun is actually manufactured in 1975. I'm gonna drag it out here. And just make it a bit bigger here so that we really make use of the space that we got there. And then same as usual, convert it over to an editable poly and give it the inset and switch over to border mode. Press Ctrl A so that you really got all the edges and then just drag them out. Auto smooth. And let's also copy our chamfer modifier that we already adjusted here on that text. And that should just come on perfectly and we can indeed just leave it like that and then we want to add that little arrow element here which we have to create from scratch pretty much since there's no such type or dingbats or whatever the fonts are called for this element. I actually don't even know what exactly it represents but we will just create it here with a plane and I'm gonna collapse the upper edge so that we have a triangle and then just give it an inset, delete the inner faces, make a ring selection in the inside again of what's left and then just drag out these edges so that we already have that triangle shape here. Let me give it another chamfer here on the inside to add a bit of extra depth there. And next I will then create that arrow here and again I will just use a plane for it. Bring it into position here. Scale it down a bit more. And that basically is already our hat here from the arrow. I will then just create an edge loop here. Make another edge connection which I'm going to chamfer. And now we can just take that edge and drag some geometry out of it here on the z-axis. And I will stop it there and drag another segment out. Again with shift. And let's just scale the whole thing up a bit. Going to add another edge connection here. And now I will take these vertexes here and just scale them up on the y-axis. Bring that down here a bit as well as these vertexes. And now we can just scale it a bit more here. 
add another edge connection here and bring that vertex up a bit. Let's make it gray. And I will then just get rid of some of these vertexes here and also give it the inset. And then, same as usual, drag these outer edges out, paste our chamfer back on, and that looks pretty good already. So let's just adjust it a bit more, put it into place. Let's just make sure it's really lined up there with the geometry that we want to bake it on. Going to drag it out a bit more here, these edges, so that we get a bit more information later on our normal map, a bit more depth to it. And that's pretty much it for that element. So next, I will zoom in here on our rear side once more. And I'm not happy with how low poly that looks here, so I will do some more chamfering. Same as here on the top. And it still looks a bit low poly, so again I'm going to go over here and adjust these edges to make it a bit more curved. Gonna add an edge connection here and just drag it a bit to the left. And as a next thing, let's have a look at the reference image. I want to add that bevel element that we have on our upper receiver, which I didn't add before. So for that, I'm gonna use our slice plane here, put it into position, and just give it a slice here, snapping it to exactly these verts that we have on that element here that we already added earlier. And now I will just deselect everything that we want to keep and then just control backspace on the edges that we can get rid of. And that leaves us here with the proper edges in place so that we can take it like this here together with these upper part and then on the x-axis I will just drag it out here. Gonna do some vertex connections here in the inside. And I will also make another edge connection through here and then just drag it out on the x-axis, x and y, to give it a bit of a curve there. And next I will get rid of that edge just for the moment so that we can chamfer that here better without causing some messy geometry there. I'm just gonna reconnect that vertex there and then get rid of that edge. So I open it up there a bit and then just connect some vertexes here which now leaves us with this nice bevel element and all that we have to do is take these knobs that we created earlier and no it sounds funny I wish I had a better word than knobs for that and I will just Take this all selected here and give it one smoothing group. Deselect the ones there at the bottom. So now this is one smoothing group and we are then ready to have it as a high poly in just a moment. Back to that stock here, I just noticed that this is still not round enough. So I will make an edge connection here. And I will then take these two vertexes that we have here and bring them up a bit, which already results in that whole element to have a nicer silhouette and overall just rounder than before. And now comes the important moment where I'm going to open the Scene Explorer and divide what we have so far in low poly and high poly. I'm going to deselect our caliber in the magazine and also our reference images 
and then take what we have, click on the folder button and that will add automatically everything into a new folder which I'm gonna call low poly. I'm going to select everything again and give it another copy. Click that folder button again which will then add it to another folder which we call high poly. So now we can deselect the low poly and just work here with the new folder that is our high poly model. And I will immediately start here with a stock, go over to where that metal cap would be later, take that edge loop and give it an extrude with these parameters here. Bring that up a little bit. Confirm, convert it to a face selection and press the auto smooth button. Let me add a few support edges here on our sides. Just with a slice tool. And I'm going to copy that turbo smooth and chamfer back here on the stock to see what it looks like. And now that I saw that little piece, I want to change the smoothing groups here. These four faces, I say auto smooth on it and that makes it a little better looking there on it. Less pinching. As for that element, I'm actually gonna switch it over to standard chamfer since it's wood and I don't really want it to be as hard edged as metal. And that's why it's important that we had that support edge there as well. And as the next thing, let's continue with our upper receiver. Going to paste our two modifiers on top of it. Go over to the chamfer parameters and adjust that a bit more here. And also I want to try with a standard chamfer here. Just one chamfer instead of a double chamfer basically. And I will continue by making that geometry here ready for our high poly. And that means that, for example, on that element, I'm going to make a ring selection here, convert it to face, and then just make sure it's one smoothing group all around. Same here on that side. And then here at the back of our upper receiver, I will select these edges here on the left and on the right side and make an edge connection. Take that edge connection or these new edges and just shift them over here to the side with our scale tool and on the x-axis and I will switch on our show end result button here and add a few more edge connections with our slice tool. So I will just put them into place and slice it and since we have our show end result toggle on we can already see what it's doing in combination with our chamfer and turbo smooth on top while we cut it. It might not be a 100% exact preview, but it's good enough to give us an idea. And usually I like to position these cuts right at the beginning or the end of any of these elements that we have here. And I know there is some funky overlapping going on there in the inside of the receiver. And we will address that in just a moment. For now, I'm only concerned to get these vertical cuts into place here. And let's have a look around. I actually forgot to add some cuts there in that center, right there which makes that grip element look a little strange. So we want to make sure we have some support edges there. One here on the right side and one on the left. And that will give it exactly the kind of stability that we need for that to look good with our chamfer and turbo smooth on top. And we may also require a few more on top of that. So let's just have a quick look around. And let me make sure that this here is one smoothing group. And over here at the back of our upper receiver, 
I will just add one more of these cuts to give it a bit of extra stability. And let's continue with the receiver. Earlier we attached these bolt heads to it and right now I actually don't want that. So I just detached the receiver as one element, put the symmetry modifier back on and then I'm gonna take these bolt heads and just apply the turbo smooth on top of it without the chamfer. And now I will take these floater elements and switch the turbo smooth on, at least for the elements where it goes in. For the ones that come out, which by the way aren't floaters, let's have a look. These ones here, I want to change our tension. So I'm going to put it to zero, which makes it a bit nicer looking there and will result in a better normal map bake. The only problem is now I have to copy that, those two modifiers, and reapply them onto all the other ones that we already had. So first of all, I'm just going to delete the modifiers that we have on top of them and then just select them one by one and paste these modifiers back on it with the right tension and turbo smooth on top. And let me of course do the same thing here on that side. First of all here for the floaters and then that thing. And again turbo smooth on the floaters as well as deleting the chamfer here and just reapplying it with the new settings. And that looks pretty good here for our elements. There's one more over there. And I just noticed that there is this element stuck there in that geometry. So I'm gonna have to open up our low poly as well. Make a selection so that we have two objects selected now at the same time for our high poly and low poly. And then just drag it out into place where it belongs. And I'm gonna close the low poly folder again and just paste that modifier stack here onto that element. And since we are already here at these two elements, let me isolate them and paste it on here. And there seems to be a bit of pinching, which we can get rid of by just pressing backspace on these two edges. And there was a little bit of an overlap here, so I'm just going to have a cut over there. Add an extra edge, which already gets rid of it. Let me increase our amount a little bit, make it a bit softer here. And then just copy that stack and paste it here on that other element, where we have the same issue with a bit of pinching, which we can just get rid of by pressing backspace on that edge. And same down here with that overlap, just going to have the cut tool and add an extra edge. And that looks good to me, can definitely work with that. And now let's take our rear side and paste these modifiers on it. And it looks like we have some overlap there on the left side on that curve, which we can just get rid of by making that edge connection here. And I want to give that face one smoothing group so that this is separated. And let's look at it again. A bit of an overlap here. So what I'm gonna do is connect these two vertexes here and same here on that side. And that already gets rid of it. Bit of an overlap here as well, which we can also get rid of by making more vertex connections. Nice and smooth. And some more overlap over here, same as on the other side. And 
let's look at our rear side leaf. If there's still anything left to do. Mostly I'm very happy with it, but I'm gonna increase the amount a bit, make it even softer. And I forgot to paste the chamfer and tubo smooth on that piece here. I'm gonna have it a little more hard edge though. And another look around here. Let me make that a little more soft here, that text. So that we get some good normal map information there. And let me paste our chamfer and turbo smooth on that piece, which came on absolutely nice. And I just want to add it also here on that piece, which also looks good. And this one here also needs it. Oh, and I forgot to add the smoothing group there at that face. And in order to get that little overlap gone there, I'm just gonna have another cut there. And also here on that side. And let me zoom in here on the front where we also have a bit of pinching, which again, we can just get rid of by adding an extra edge there. It may not always be the worst thing in the world if we have a bit of an extra pinch there. So don't worry if some of these elements you, you have it and you can just not get rid of it. It's usually not so bad. And once we have all our textures applied, it usually doesn't even matter. But of course it's good to make sure to have as little pinching overall as possible. And I will just take these edges that we have here on that element and extrude them in the inside so that it looks like this piece is also a separate one. And then we have our bolt carrier here, which also needs some work. Paste Turbo Smooth and Chamfer on. And I'm gonna have some edge cuts here with our cut tool. And then it's a matter of assigning smoothing groups here into the right places. So these faces here are definitely going to be a separate smoothing group. And then I'm gonna have all these three faces here, separate smoothing groups, so that we don't have any weird pinching around that handle that we have on it. Let me continue here with the actual receiver. And I'm gonna have some more edges there on the inside to make it nice and clean. And now we have this problematic happening here at the bottom of it. And that's easy to fix again with our slice tool in combination with the snap. Just gonna snap it all to these vertexes and then give it a good cut. And that will definitely get rid of it once we're through here with it. More here on the top. And I'm gonna just add one here in the middle as well, just some more support edges. And that pretty much fixed it down here. Just on that element here where the trigger goes in, we want to have the same slice action happening. I'm gonna snap it and slice it. And that looks really good. Nothing to worry about for our normal map bake. Aside from that little nasty pinch that we have there. So that's definitely one we want to get rid of. And that can sometimes happen when we have too many vertexes or edges in one place. So I'm just gonna 
select them and collapse them and target weld them. We have them there because we were just doing that cutting action and that was adding a whole lot of these extra vertexes here where we didn't anticipate them. But again, we can just quickly get rid of them here by target welding that back into place. And now we have a really nice receiver here. And let's continue with our trigger again, paste our modifiers back on. And I want to have these front faces here as one smoothing group. So let me make a ring selection there on the inside, convert it to face. And now with these faces, I'm just going to grow the selection and give it one smoothing group there, which results in a nice trigger as seen on our reference images. And we already had the smoothing groups in place here. I'm just going to get rid of that edge with backspace there to minimize some pinching. And as for that element that we have here, I'm just going to have some support edges that we can just create with a chamfer. Add an edge loop and chamfer it is what I mean. And let's see about these faces. I want them to be one smoothing group. So in that case, I'm just gonna clear all and give it one straight out of that smoothing group selection box. And these bold hats, I forgot to add the turbo smooth earlier. So I'm just gonna do that now. And that element here also turbo smooth and chamfer on it. And the more I look at our magazine, the less happy I am with it. Because have a look at these elements here. On our model, they are way smaller than they appear to be on the reference image. And since we don't just want to recreate everything from scratch, we have to work with the geometry that we already have in place. And I will just make edge loop selections here on these elements that we were pushing out earlier. And then just deselect the top and the bottom edges that we don't want to use for our chamfer action that we're going to do now. Make sure you have that button unchecked or else it will break your smoothing groups. And now it's just a matter of getting these parameters right here confirming that and then we can just delete with control backspace these edges that we don't want to have anymore and just target weld these things back together here. Let me also select all these edges and same as on the left side control backspace and now we already have these pieces looking better than before much thicker now and I'm just gonna have to do the same thing here at the bottom. So for that, I will just take these faces that we have here only at the bottom. And then let's switch over to left autographic view. Go over here to our move tool and just drag them down so that we get there a little bit of extra beef in there. And that basically fixed it already. Now the only thing is that we have to add that back into our low poly folder. So let's bring up the scene explorer, copy that magazine here and drag that element into our low poly folder. And let's make sure that we also go into our low poly here and delete the old magazine that we don't want to have. So let's make sure we take the right one. And that's the one here on the right. I'm just going to delete it. Close the low poly and back to our high poly folder. And now I'm just going to have to copy and paste the chamfer and turbo smooth on top of our magazine and that is definitely a magazine to be happy about. 
Let me just have another look around here and play a bit with our amount, the actual crease on our object here. And also I'm gonna have the tension put to 0.5, which I think is the best setting here for it. But other than that, the magazine looks fine to me. So we can continue here with the safety switch. And as usual, I'm just gonna paste our modifiers on top and then see what we have to do such as applying the smoothing group there to that face that I just selected. However, it's still messing a little bit up there, the geometry. So we have to put some slice planes here into place, snap them over to these vertexes and that should fix it. And also over here where we had that overlap. And now it's almost done. We just have to take these faces here. And I will also give them individual smoothing groups so that we have a better chamfer result there. And speaking of which, I want to bring the amount down so that it's not overlapping there. Gonna take all these faces that we have here Actually, I can just make a ring selection and convert it to face selection and give it all one smoothing group around there to make it nice and smooth. And let's see what else we got. Again, I'm gonna widen the amount a little bit. But other than that, we have that safety switch completed and we can just paste it here onto the next element. make it a little softer. And also what I want to do is take these edges here and extrude them in a little bit. So that again, it looks like this is actually a separate element on top of that. Gonna have to give it also smoothing groups, these extruded edges. And then again, adjust our chamfer a bit, which results in a nice looking bowl hat or screw element. Just one last adjustment here of the amount, make it a bit smoother again. And as a next thing, I still have to do some smoothing group work here on that thing. So first of all, I'm going to take it here, make some vertex connections. And now back to our face selection, I'm just going to auto smooth everything. Make a selection here for all the faces that we have here on the left side and auto smooth it again. And then these two faces I'm also gonna auto smooth. And then it's just a matter of making an edge connection here, which will function as a support edge here at the bottom. And another one here for the top. So let's paste these modifiers on there. And I want it a bit softer. So I'm gonna have it in standard chamfer and not quad chamfer for that. And that looks good here, that metal cap. So let me also paste the modifiers onto that cylinder that we have there in the middle. And other than that, I will continue with our hand guard here. And I want to change it over to the standard chamfer because it's wood and it shouldn't be as hard edged as it was before. Let me also cut a few extra support edges in here. Snap it into place and slice it and both vertically and horizontally. It doesn't always have to be snapped into place, but it's usually a good habit just to do it that way. And another one over here. It is important to have these support edges because we're using the standard chamfer, not the quad chamfer. And therefore it's important to have some extra support geometry in place. Let me go back in here and add a few more even. 
Again, I'm gonna snap it into these positions there where we have these cutout pieces. And that already starts looking more like it. It's a bit too soft at the moment, so we have to adjust our amount here. And I'm actually gonna get rid of that edge there, which will result in a bit of a nicer edge flow on our high poly. And that looks good here for our bottom handguard. Going to copy these two modifiers. And since they have the values for our wood, we can just paste them here on the upper handguard. And same as on the one at the bottom, I'm gonna have to do some cutting here. Let me add some support geometry there. And same over here. And another one here horizontally. And a few more here that I snap into place. Also over here and one more there on the right. And zooming in here we have a bit of a pinching there which we can get rid of by taking these two edges and pressing backspace on it. And that already looks better than before. The only other thing is that in our chamfer parameters I'm gonna bring the amount down to zero, which I think looks the best here on that element. Fortunately on this element here we already had our chamfer and turbo smooth in place, so there's not much left other than maybe making it a bit softer looking. And I just see that we also have some overlap here, so I can just fix that by making some vertex connections here. And I forgot to cap that face for whatever reason earlier. So I have to do that now and also make sure that we cap it at our low poly mesh. So let's select the low poly, cap that and let's just go back to our high poly folder again. And let's continue here with the next piece which is that element that we have right here. And I'm actually going to add something to it. So for that, first of all, I'm gonna detach it here, put it into isolation mode, and make vertex connections here on these birds so that we can now add these elements that we see there on the reference image by selecting these birds and just chamfering them. And let me take these birds that we have there in the back and push them in a bit and also these ones, I just want to drag them out a bit more to the right side. And now we'll just connect these vertices here together. And let's paste our chamfer and turbo smooth on top. And in that case, I want to make sure that our chamfer is set to quad chamfer. Let's get these parameters right here again because I pasted it from the wood, so we have to make sure it's actually applying to our metal, which the quad chamfer is better for in most cases. And let me just have another look around here. I think it would be good to add another cut here. And I will just get rid of these edges there at the top. So other than that, we are having a pretty nice looking high poly element here. And what I want to do is bring some more geometry in here, both on that side and on the other. Let's make sure we auto smooth it as well. And same over here. Let me add some extrusion here to the inside 
so that again later on our normal map it will look like that barrel element actually comes out of that piece. Convert it to face selection and also auto smooth it. And let's have a look at our reference image which shows us that we want to take off a few faces here. I'm going to take them like that, give them an inset and then just take these faces that we have now and on the y-axis shift them over here to the left side. So now I'm going to grow that selection and give it an auto smooth. And I also want to add another support edge loop here. Select these edges and connect them and then just drag it over here to the left side which looks better in that case. And also I want it to be a bit softer overall here. So let me just go into the parameters and soften it a bit. And let me take this barrel element here and detach the front side element from it. Paste our Togo Smooth and Chamfer back on. And I want to fix that here a little bit. It looks a bit strange. And for that I'm gonna have some edges going through here support edges and some more and I'm just gonna straighten them here by having edge constraint on and just pushing them into the middle edge. Alternatively we could also use our align shortcuts and just some more support edges here along these lines and let me go over here to our front side and also have a look what we can do here. And first of all, I want to go in isolation mode and I'm going to get the pivot over here into the center of it by pressing the shortcut for align pivot to selection as seen in our introduction video. Alternatively, you can always go to hierarchy and change the pivot there. And I make a edge connection here for the middle of that element and connect these words together. Give these faces here individual smoothing groups same as these ones here and just some more vertex connections actually I'm gonna cut it down here add some extra edges and let me uncheck minimum angle which often also fixes some overlapping that we have let me cap that hole that we have there And let me also add some extra edges here on that side, some more support edges that we can just chamfer. Same as here. And also here on that side. And I want to do the same thing here for that element. Connect and chamfer. on all our sides and let's see what we have left let me jump out of the isolation mode again and look around and since we are just working on our front side let's paste these modifiers on our needle and that looks really good we don't need any further adjustments on that However, here on our front side itself, I want to make it a little softer around the edges. So I'm going to increase the amount. And the same thing here on that cylinder, make it a bit softer. And let me also paste that onto that element. Let's add some support edges and paste it. And that's too hard edge, so I'm also going to have it softer. And let's see what else we have. Gonna take these edges here and also extrude them in. 
again so that on our normal map it will look like that barrel is actually continuing under that and we get some nice normal and AO information on that. And I was just having a look at our reference image here which reveals that we have to add some more high poly floater elements, these two in particular. And I will just take that piece which we already have pretty much and copy it over here to the safety switch first of all. Put it into position somewhere there in the center. Just scale it down a little bit and reposition that. And then I will take that piece that we also already have. I'm gonna just make it a little softer. And since we do it here, we also have to paste that parameter value in here on the top part. So we get a bit more normal map information out of that. And I'm gonna take that piece and paste it over here under the safety switch. And don't worry that it's overlapping at the moment. That won't be a problem later when we bake. Let's take that piece and also add our modifiers on top. And it looks like I want to take these faces here that we have and add a few more support loops here. Same as here on the left and the right side. Just chamfering will do that pretty much. And the same over here. And now we have a good looking high poly object here that actually follows our low poly shape most importantly. Also gonna extrude in here. Again, just for the sake of having some normal map information there later. Take these faces and give them one smoothing group. And just change the amount so that it's a little bit more hard edged. And somehow there is some geometry missing, so I'm gonna have to isolate that. First of all, let me weld everything. I think there were still some overlapping vertexes. And now I'm just gonna cap that back here as well as connecting some vertexes over here. And one smoothing group here for these faces and also that segment there. And also we wanna do the same thing here for our low poly where unfortunately we have the same geometry, so it's also missing there. Gonna collapse that symmetry modifier and just cap that hole and again connect some vertexes here. Also make sure everything is welded properly. And then just back to our high poly again. And let's have a look around what's left. And I see that we have a bit of a strange smoothing group problem here. This one is smoothing group 4 and this one has one smoothing group too much. So let me take these faces here at the front and just disable smoothing group 1 so that this is all one continuous set of smoothing group here. And again we are referencing that image here. And I don't know why I missed it but this element right there needs another smoothing group here on these two faces. Let's do some more vertex connections here to minimize the overlapping that we sometimes get. And also here I'm gonna select these faces, give them a different smoothing group. 
Let's turn off the minimum angle again here, which also helps to fix some overlapping sometimes. And that starts looking really nice here, our handguard. Let me add another floater to it here at the bottom. Just gonna make use of this one that we already have and rotate it around 90 degree and then in left autographic view just position it to where we see it on the reference image make sure it's perfectly centered and also what i want to do with it is to add an actual depth there to that screw so as usual i'm just going to use our inset and drag some geometry out that way and let's have a look at the reference image again I want to add another floater here on our handguard for that piece that we just saw there and I will just copy it over here from our receiver make use of that floater that we already have and just position it here on our handguard And let me go into that face here and scale it down a bit so we get a little bit more normal map information on it. And while being in local mode here, I'm gonna drag it out a slight amount so that we have a bit of a curvature there. Put it to standard chamfer, should be fine for that. I don't want it to be very hard edged looking at all. And also on the stock we have the same kind of element. Let's have another look at the reference image. And this is a very subtle kind of a nail or a bold hat that we don't want to have super strong, but visible enough so that we can have some information later in our maps. So we'll again use that same piece that we just modified and used in our handguard and take it here on our stock, make sure it's positioned correctly. And since that stock has a bit of a curve to it, we have to rotate it around a little bit so that the normal map later doesn't get any confusion from where the rays should bake it. Let me take that other element here and also copy it over here to the left side, to the end of the stock. And another copy down here, which also we want to do some rotation too, same as the one here on the top. As long as it doesn't intersect, we are all good there, but let's avoid any intersection with it. And since we will only unwrap the right side of our stock later, I'm not gonna put the floaters on the left side where we don't need them. And having a look at our reference image here makes me want to go back here to that element that we were just working on and take these faces that we have here, delete the inner face and select every second edge that we have here on it and then just collapse it. And now I'm going to take that element, drag some edges out or in actually cap the hole at the middle and just scale everything up a bit. Take the inner face, grow the selection and scale it. And that gives us an actual screw there, unlike that bolt that we had before. Let me go back here to that floater element and I want to add some extra support edge here to it. 
and also delete the faces at the bottom which actually we don't want to have so really just leaving that shape then to us gonna add a few more edges there just so that it's really straight usually the rule of thumb is that the more edges we add the straighter our geometry appears once we apply turbo smooth on top of it and also that piece here is going a bit too up there so I will bring it down here on the z-axis And again, I only have the turbo smooth on it without chamfer because this is all one smoothing group anyway, that piece. So we don't need to have any chamfer modification on that. Let's have another look around here. And I actually want to add this little element that looks like it's been chipped away there. So let me make an edge connection here. Straighten that and then just take that vertex and chamfer it. Similar to what we were doing on the gas cylinder block just earlier. Gonna take these two vertexes here, target weld them, and then take these two and make an edge connection and give it one smoothing group. So that's pretty much already it there. And let me zoom in here on our pistol stock if you look at the ref image, you see that since it's plastic, it has been molded together there in the half of it. So in order to simulate that on our normal map, I'm gonna take that middle edge connection here that we already have and just give it an extrude with a very minimal threshold. So let's really keep it small. We don't want to exaggerate that too much. Convert it to a face selection, give it all one smoothing group. And that gives us that seam there that we want to have. Let's have another look around. And that might be a little too soft, so I'm gonna just make it more hard edged here. And as one of the next things, I want to go over here to our low poly folder again. We are done with our high poly modeling. And back to our low poly here, we have some floaters that we already created earlier before we split it up. And now it's time to actually delete them. So let's select everything here that is a floater. And then just delete it because this is actual geometry that as the name suggests is floating and shouldn't be part of our low poly mesh that's only needed in our high poly folder to help us get a nice normal map bake and also once we did all that here deleting all these floaters I will then go into the individual elements and also get rid of the chamfer and turbo smooth on it. Because for this kind of geometry, we want to make sure we don't have any modifiers on top of it. Just pure geometry. So I'm still having a look here around, finding some more floaters that we want to delete. Let's just make sure we don't delete anything that actually we want to keep around as low poly geometry. Such as for example these two here. However here in the background let's remember that these were floater objects and we just gonna keep the screws in the foreground. So now with all these floaters gone it's then time to go into the individual elements and just get rid of the chamfer and turbo smooth modifiers so that again we're only left here with our low poly geometry. And 
and these elements all have the chamfer modifier so again let's get rid of it same as here on that side and there are some more floaters that I forgot to delete earlier this one here is not a floater so let's make sure to only delete the modifiers and not the object itself I'm gonna collapse the symmetry modifier here on that Make sure it's 0.01 when you collapse it, so you don't get any weird welding problems. And that one here as well. X-ray mode is usually a good thing to spot some of these high poly elements for a case like that. So that we see where we already deleted our modifiers and where not, such as here. Oh, and another floater down here. And that looks like this is our low poly mesh. So as a next thing, we will then continue with actual unwrapping, which really is not the most exciting part of the whole 3D creation process in general, but it's a part of it and it's a very important one. So I hope I see you there and we will then continue by getting that AKM unwrapped. I'll see you there.